Greetings collectors and space fans, I'm Jim Franjone and welcome back to another installment of Taking Up Space, the place where space history lives and where every artifact tells a story. If you're as passionate as I am about the history of space flight and collecting vintage artifacts and memorabilia from the space age, you're going to want to click on the subscribe button and notification bell down below so that you don't miss out on a single episode. When sharing artifacts in my collection with others, inevitably two questions pop up in the conversations. One, what was the first artifact you owned? And two, how does one get started in a hobby like this and build a collection for themselves? In this episode, I'll do my best to answer both of those questions by A, featuring my very first astronaut autograph as the highlighted artifact, and B, by offering up some resources that I've used over the years to further build my collection, resources that you can use to better understand the space collecting landscape, start building your own collection, or to just window shop some galleries of really cool looking mid 20th century space age Americana. And to make it convenient for you, have no fear, I have links to all of those resources listed for you in the description down below. So here we go. To take you back to my very first astronaut autograph, we have to set our time machine back to 1982. Ah, 1982. I'm all of 12 years old and the space shuttle is a brand new flying machine, having launched Columbia on its maiden voyage only a year earlier. At a small local airport, the district's congressman is hosting a space day event with a real live astronaut in attendance. My best buddy, Felipe, and I are supposed to go together, but due to a shakeup in some of the travel plans, his cousin didn't want another pesky kid around, only he makes it there that day. I am crushed. A quick word on Felipe. We've been friends through it all, thick and thin, from our preteen years all the way through to this very day, bound by a lot of things, not least of which is a shared fascination for all things space related. As you can see here, we've been through a lot together. School, jobs, marriages, kids, good days, bad hair days, and well, no hair days. He'll play a heavy role in some future episodes of Taking Up Space, but for now let's get back to Space Day 1982. One thing a good friend will always do is well, he will always have your back. And knowing how crushed I was not to go with him that day, he did manage to take the sting out of things by presenting me with an autograph from the astronaut present that day, none other than astronaut Fred Hayes. It's hard to believe, but it's almost 40 years since he presented this to me. And as I alluded to a few seconds ago, this signed NASA litho is a bit of a time machine for me. A couple of pinholes here and there, some tape remnants. It's even got some paneling from, uh, stuck onto some double stick tape on the back as a reminder of the room where it once hung in my childhood home. Fred Hayes, of course, plays some mighty big roles in the annals of space history as the lunar module pilot for Apollo 13 and as the commander of the very first approach and landing test for the Space Shuttle Enterprise, which is now on display at the Intrepid Air and Space Museum in New York City. As simple as it is, this vintage artifact is among my most treasured. It propelled an existing interest in space exploration into an obsession, and it launched decades of learning through collecting and curating and preservation, and it's always served as a reminder of the power of having a truly great friend in one's life. This photo and its relationship to Felipe will forever be inextricably linked. That's the story this artifact speaks to me. It's a deeply personal one, and it's why I treasure it so much. For me, it's priceless. A quick footnote, it took years, but I finally did get to meet Fred Hayes at an Astronaut Scholarship Foundation function. It turned out to be worth the wait. I also got to meet Jim Lovell and a whole bunch of other astronauts and mission controllers that day. Surreal. So, now that you know how I got started, how can you get started? Well, it's easier than you may think. It could start with something that just simply appeals to you. Something as simple as, say, a patch. And it doesn't have to cost you a ton of money either. Sure, there are items that fetch hundreds of dollars, even thousands of dollars, even hundreds of thousands of dollars. But believe it or not, there's plenty of vintage and even current items out there that are artifacts in every sense of the word that can be found for about $10 or even free. As long as it appeals to you and speaks to you, it really doesn't matter what it costs. It may remind you of a time and or a place, or it may have inspired you in some way. If it does either of those things, the value goes way beyond what something costs. So, two quick tips before I share some reliable resources with you. It's helpful if you start with a particular focus. Is it autographs? Is it, say, vintage paper? Um, is it maybe perhaps vintage magazines? Uh, or is it space flown items? Or is it even ephemera from a particular age in space, like these gum carts from 1963, uh, the original set of Mercury astronauts? Don't worry, we'll have a whole episode dedicated to these. Second, eBay. A great resource, but it's a double-edged sword. So keep this in mind whether on eBay or on any other auction site. What items sell for and what items are actually worth are two very different things. 
and nor is the asking price at an auction or on eBay reflective of what an item is actually worth. You're going to need to do your research to understand this before you start plunking down your hard-earned money. Rob Perlman and the folks over at CollectSpace are indispensable in this regard. The other part of this I would mention is autographs, especially those of the vintage variety. Be wary of any fakes that are out there, and you need to know the difference between what an autograph is and what an auto pen signature is, an auto pen being signed by a machine. While vintage and very cool in and of itself, it's not signed by a human hand, and sometimes the folks who are selling these things don't understand that or don't recognize it as such, and they advertise these things as hand signed. So be very careful. Again, buyer beware. Do your homework and understand the things that you're looking to pick up. So here we go. I'm going to break this down into five ways that you can begin a space collecting odyssey today and perhaps have this launch you on your own journey inspired to pursue an education or maybe even a career field related to science, technology, engineering, art, or math. So the five ways that we're going to look at here today are going to be NASA.gov and actually writing to an astronaut, direct purchases from an astronaut, meet and greet opportunities, private sales, and then auctions. So here we go. NASA.gov and writing to an active astronaut. Here's the free part. If it's an image you're after, or images that you're after, just go to nasa.gov, check out the galleries, download the files, put them on your phone, or print all that you want. In my day, this required writing an actual letter to NASA, requesting specific images, and then waiting on snail mail for them to return. Now, it couldn't be easier. So too, if you're looking to get an autograph from an active NASA astronaut, you'll have to write a letter to the address shown here and rely on snail mail, but you'll get a response. Now, depending on the request volume, you may get an auto pen signature or an actual hand signed autograph, but either way, you'll get something really neat and it's for free. How's that for an easy way to start a collection? Next up, direct astronaut sales. Many of the former and retired astronauts offer items and autographs for sale via their own websites, including Apollo astronaut Walt Cunningham and Apollo moonwalker Charlie Duke. ISS and shuttle astronaut Nicole Stott offers signed prints of her art online as well as many space themed jewelry items that were inspired by her watercolor paintings. And here's the kicker, buying from Nicole Stott also presents a great way to contribute to her fantastic Space for Art Foundation. I highly encourage you to take a look. And then there's Fred Hayes, the legend himself. For a $75 donation to the Infinity Science Center in his home state of Mississippi, he'll sign any item that you send him. Like Nicole Stott, it's another way to do good and to contribute to our shared mission of carrying the fire of awe and inspiration to the next generation of explorers and spacefarers. You can't miss any these opportunities. Third, we're going to talk about meet and greet opportunities. As I've mentioned in the previous episode, many of my favorite artifacts are actually all in my mind. Memories of meetings and interactions and shared experiences with some of the most remarkable human beings to ever walk the planet. The Astronaut Scholarship Foundation hosts annual astronaut rendezvous experiences where you can meet astronauts and other collectors, get autographs, and make purchases with the proceeds going towards the scholarships offered by the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation. Another great opportunity to put an interest and a hobby to use for a greater good. Nova Space Galleries of Tucson, Arizona hosts annual Space Fest gatherings, which is another highly recommended meet and greet experience with a slew of astronauts, mission controllers, and highly accomplished artists. Both are absolutely fantastic experiences if you ever can attend, but if you can't, both the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation and Nova Space offer high quality autographs, artifacts, and space related items for sale online. Definitely take a look and check them out. As we move into private dealers, it pays to know who you're working with. I've been purchasing from certain dealers for decades. They have solid reputations and they have my confidence in their reliability. Not to exclude anyone, but names like Steve Hankow of Farthest Reaches and Donis Willis of Lunar Legacies certainly come to the top of my mind. But here's the thing, you need to feel comfortable with whomever you're dealing with. As I said, do your research before you start plunking down your hard-earned money and use CollectSpace website as a resource to do that vetting. I've made purchases from all of these vendors shown here and have been very happy with my experiences. Check them out. Even window shopping can be a feast for your eyes. And finally, there are auctions available for the more hardcore. Sure, eBay will suffice for some types of vintage ephemera and memorabilia, provided you've done your homework and you know what and whom you're dealing with. But the auctions highlighted here are in a different league. Heritage, for instance, offers many items consigned from the collections of power players in the space collecting field, as well as directly from the astronauts themselves. As you can see in the image on the left, it's Heritage who has been handling items coming from the Neil Armstrong family collection, as well as from the collections of other moonwalkers, 
Buzz Aldrin and John Young. Also terrific are the auctions presented by the American Space Museum and Space Walk of Fame and those presented by Lunar Legacies, both hosted on Invaluable. These typically contain some very cool items and rare gems that are consigned from private collections and oftentimes they contain consignments from some of the astronauts as well. The best part is that these folks are collectors themselves. They know the passion and they know the hobby well. When I bid here, I bid with confidence. I can't say enough about how much I enjoy these. In either case, even if you're not buying, these auctions are simply fascinating things to watch. One can learn a great deal about the space collecting hobby and the space collecting market by doing so. Just be careful if you're going to register to bid. You'll need to have a plan. So there you have it. A little longer than normal, but that's the story behind the artifact that started me on my space collecting journey and a little bit of background on how you might approach starting your own collection with all the hopes of the awe and wonder and passion it can inspire in you. Thank you for joining us today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up down below and feel free to let me know your thoughts by dropping me an email at jim.takenupspace at gmail.com. That's all for this episode. Until next time, space collectors and space fans, keep your head held high and keep your eyes on the stars. <laughs>